War in Ukraine shows that U.S. lags behind Russia in electronic warfare. The U.S. military has been surpassed by Russia and other potential adversaries in the field of electronic warfare, including jamming technology used to take down enemy weapons, a retired Pentagon official has reportedly lamented. Speaking at the conference in Tampa, Florida, retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Mike Nagata warned that Washington is still falling behind its rivals in electronic combat. The gap between where the United States should be and where we are, in my judgment, continues to expand not everywhere, but in far too many places. Defense One quoted Nagata as saying, Jamming technology has become an increasingly important battlefield tool, as evidenced by the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Russian forces have been successful in sending HIMARS rockets and other US-made weaponry off course, using electronic signals to scramble their guidance systems. In fact, General Valery Zaluzny, then Ukraine's commander-in-chief, said in an interview last November that Russia had gained the upper hand. He called electronic warfare the key to victory. The Pentagon will need to be more creative in its use of radio technologies, especially space-based communications, to close the gap in the electronic warfare domain, said Nagata, who led US Special Operations Command Central in the Middle East. Russian jamming has reportedly reduced the accuracy rate of US-made Excalibur artillery shells to 6% from their normal level of 70%. Retired special operations officials told Defense One that Moscow had consistently invested in electromagnetic innovations for decades. While those advances were being made, the outlet said US electronic warfare efforts were focused on gathering intelligence in the Middle East. Nagata said, Countering Russia's jamming prowess will require more risk-taking in efforts to advance satellite communications and other technologies. The U.S. government, particularly its leadership, from senior military officers all the way to civilian policymakers, we have to be willing to take more risk in experimenting with, adopting and employing new technologies. We will invite failure along the way, but if you're not willing to fail, you're not going to succeed. At least two people were killed and hundreds injured during riots in the Pacific territory of New Caledonia. The riots that started on Monday are in response to French Parliament's decision to give French residents their more voting rights. Rioters have been reportedly torching cars, setting buildings alight and attacking police stations. There have also been reports of several exchanges of fire between rioters and civil defense groups in capital Noumea. The riots forced French President Emmanuel Macron to cancel a trip to chair an emergency defense and national security meeting on Wednesday, the president's office said. This is the worst unrest the island has seen since the 1980s. Located between Australia and Fiji, New Caledonia has been a French territory since the 19th century. The violence started after lawmakers in Paris voted 351 to 153 to grant French citizens who have lived in New Caledonia for at least 10 years the right to vote in provincial elections. They argued this was democratically fair. French authorities imposed a nighttime curfew and ban on public gatherings on Tuesday in response to the ongoing riots. However, France's High Commission of the Republic in New Caledonia on Wednesday said that serious disturbances were continuing and there had been an attempted prison breakout. The French interior minister said that hundreds of people, including police officers, were injured in the unrest. <laughs>